Here I have a weekly chart update to my MMTs on Father's Day, 11.25 a.m., 6.17 of 2012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's been great for the long side and the short side. I mean, it, 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 it has its volatility, but one of the things that I would like to show you that on a closing level, it closes at 564.51. I would like to inform the MMT that the 100-day weekly or 100-weekly moving average now is at 572.67. That's this line right there, MMT, that the 10-week has crossed over the 40-week and has a descended in greater value. Yes, it's, 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 it's upside volatility. As we're saying, when they do that, if we gap up at all because of the way that the weekly sell signal is here at negative 4.2, but this percent DS weekly is getting at low levels. And what I will tell my MMTs is that the high frequency, when you come down and hit the support levels, you're going to bounce stronger off of support levels off the bottom because you're going to reach a downward spiral in the shorter term. If this gaps down with the market and Greece and all of that crap and everything else, you got QE3, you got FOMC meeting this coming week, you have all of that. Uh, yes, the trend is very negative, but it's in the bear trend, but bear trends do trade up off of the bottom. And that means that the weekly sell signal is in play, minus 4.2. That's what the big hedge fund managers and standard people are going to look at. And they all have a different interpretation of all of this. We would just like to show and feature the breakout on Google on Friday. Um, today's date is 6.17. So uh, it was a triple witch. And you can see here at the end of the day that the half bar was 559.03 and that blew right through up here to the close of and we have the close of this bar right here and that was above the 562 area because it was here's what a weekly standard chart looks like in these weekly moving averages now I'm going to pull up a daily chart in the platform that we have and a daily one is going to show you a much better picture in our system here let me calculate the deltas okay bam there it is three dollars and seventy one cents is going to be a half a delta tomorrow on monday this is a daily um, you can see uh, through this period of time when they bounce in volatility it's made the lows down in the lower end of the price ranges in our system and what that means is that when you drop down lower in Google because of the public analysis and high frequency machines this 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 is uh, considered a bear trend of course we all know that however when you get short-term oversold at certain levels you will bounce stronger off support but you will remain selling into the major resistance level. And the 100-week moving average is going to be major resistance level. And that's 572.67. The declining 10-weekly moving average that you've been being trained about on a standard level is 594.57 still. And, and falling on a weekly level. Now, granted that high-frequency models are programmed at certain levels with standard technical analysis where turns are automatically going to have a higher volume entry at the lower price levels which would support the lower support levels in the prices so let's say we go down to 552.50, 552.75 area we start getting down in those low channels there and I can tell you that in our system right now a half delta down on Monday a one and one half delta down that's eleven dollars and fourteen cents from here so if we went down eleven dollars and fourteen cents tomorrow morning write the number down negative one and a half delta is five fifty three point thirty seven um, 
the one full delta down that you're going to want to be aware of, which is $7.43 below the current closing price, is you're going to want to set the alarm there that if the price falls to 557.10, you'll be alerted at negative one delta. And that the half delta structure for you is to set alarms. Just set an alarm at 561.25. That's about not quite a half delta down, but close enough. That way you get triggered on the negative side. Now, as far as gaps from here go, you're going to want to have that 568.20 area marked. And then on a full delta cap, it's going to be almost right into this 100-week moving average, believe it or not. Your platform has that priced in. And that price is going to be 571.94, below, slightly below that 100-week. But that's what your, your, your platform here uh, has that priced. And that's going to be right up here in this diamond area. So let's blow up right here in your platform, in your delta tree. So let's take a look at that's going to be right over here where that 10-day moving average is. So I can tell you that one full delta and one and a half delta in volatility, which is $11.15 higher, is going to be 575.66 for tomorrow. That's the upper end. And when we take a look at some of these prices, now we start getting into this half bar structure which is going to be the wall of resistance on the way up. And that's going to be at uh, this half bar that was set on the date of, let's find out the date of our half bar. This one was done on 611 of 2012. That was six days ago. That's going to be the upper end of resistance there. That's going to be resistance level number two, though. Resistance level number one will be over here. And we're there right now because on 612, your daily half bar range is 564.44 pennies. And where did Google close? Well, let's take a look. Looks like it closed at 564.51, up 5.46 on that triple witch on 3 million shares. And people were jumping in the name and short covering going into the FOMC meeting next week. And we can clearly see that our platform will tell you exactly on the daily of where these gaps can go that I told you about and where these half bar resistances are. You're already there at 564.51. This half bar right here is 564.44. You're slightly above the bar on a closing level by a few pennies. Resistance number two is going to be major. That's going to be 576. So set alarms rises to 575.50. We're going to have major areas at, yeah, 575.25, half bar over here on 6.4. That's just half a green positive bar. Set that level. And then this level is going to be. Here's a shorter term level. You see this half bar that was set on 6.5? Your half daily SMF market maker bar is 572.30. Right here. 6.5. That's going to be your, uh, 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 that, 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 that's, that's going to be a wall of resistance going up to that price level. That's going to be that one. And this one over here, well, it's already here at this half bar as far as price goes. So the range was $11.72 on Friday from top to bottom, on the daily anyway. Here they mark it a little bit differently, but you close at 559, you're holding that 557 area. And part of the reason is that on a shorter term level now, very shorter term level, the lower support levels will bounce. Um, what we would be looking at is where those prices would come into play. And we're going to set the options. This is setting up a daily bottom right here in the shorter term. When things get oversold short term, even though that the weekly charts are very negative and they're very bearish as it is, 
you still bounce off support and sell into resistance. We'll be doing the calls and the puts on Google weekly and monthly options based on QE3 based on worldwide banking system in Greece today we're gonna to find out how the markets respond tomorrow but the lower that we go in the channel the more oversold that we will get on a short short-term level where they will turn right off of that bottom and bounce off of those support levels at the lower levels and we'll be watching those levels right around that 550 250 is where we'd like to see it go